Hello? Woo! What a conference, huh? Yeah. The main resistance to accepting fructose uric acid metabolism as a main central driver of metabolic disease is the assumption that only fructose opens that pathway. How many of you have ever heard of a molecular trigger before? This is kind of what I thought. So today I'm going to tell you about a molecular trigger that is the survival switch, which is a glucose sensor with which polyol fructose uric acid metabolism is opened with all of the effects of adding exogenous fructose. Let's make sure I get the button right here. Ah, okay. So here you're looking at the survival switch characterized or constituted by four enzymes, glucokinase, aldose reductase, fructokinase on the right, and phosphofructokinase 1 on the left. Notice that glucokinase and aldose reductase are sitting atop a cliff, well, atop of a fork in a road. The left side is the cellular choice to do glycolysis. The right fork is the cellular choice to do polyol pathway into, fructose kinase, into the fructokinase reaction and then full on fructose uric acid metabolism. I consider glucokinase and aldose reductase to be a gateway. And fr both glucokinase and aldose reductase are sensitive to the concentration of glucose, and I, I will get to that in a minute. Both phosphofructokinase 1 and fructokinase are special. Both of them catalyze trapdoor reactions. These are doorways once opened where these reactions are irreversible. Once the reaction is open, then the 100% commitment is made to the pathway of whatever the choice is. If it's PFK1, you're asking for full-on glycolysis. If it's fructokinase, we have full-on fructose uric acid metabolism. Here you're looking at the fork under low glucose concentrations. I am defining low intracellular glucose concentrations at 5 millimolar, which is about 90 mg per deciliter. Under those conditions, hexokinase catalyzes the efficient conversion to low levels of glucose 6-phosphate, then another transition, and we hit the trapdoor, PFK1, with 100% commitment to glycolysis, the production of the glycolytic substrates lactate and pyruvate, which can enter the mitochondria and be burned to produce ATP, along with those other substrates. This I characterize as the burning state. And then before, I realize I forgot something. So on the right fork, both glucokinase under these conditions and aldose reductase are inactivated. Glucokinase under low glucose is sequestered in the nucleus, to, uh, bound up to its regulatory protein, glucokinase regulatory protein, and aldose reductase is in its inactivated state. Now, in the normal, uh, let's see, I think if I go back, yeah, under normal polyol pathway, which is underneath aldose reductase in this initial slide, that consists of two biochemical steps. So when aldose reductase gets activated, we have the efficient transformation of glucose to sorbitol by aldose reductase and then sorbitol to endogenous fructose. This is going on right in the liver with sorbitol dehydrogenase. Now, when we elevate the glucose above 5 millimolar, intracellular, intra-liver, 
glucose, above 90 mg per deciliter. We activate both glucokinase and, aldo, and also aldose reductase. Glucokinase is going to be released by glucokinase regulatory protein. It will translocate into the cytoplasm where it will begin to operate very quickly on the pooled glucose that is there. It's important to understand that glucokinase is not only activated by glucose, it is also activated by micromolar, micromolar concentrations of sorbitol, fructose, and fructose 1-phosphate, the substrates of fructose, initial fructose uric acid metabolism. The difference in activatable concentration is a thousand-fold. In other words, glucokinase is more sensitive to activation by uh, substrates of fructose than it is to glucose. Now, once we activate the polyol pathway, the glucose is going to be pushed into endogenous fructose. Fructokinase is going to operate. It's a trapdoor mechanism. So that step is going to happen very, very quickly, and the thermodynamic, thermodynamics are extremely favorable. That means everybody who's showing up there is going to get converted to fructose 1-phosphate. With the formation of fructose 1-phosphate, we have a sudden decline in cellular ATP. We have a sudden decline in phosphate. With the burst of AMP, we have two, two or three steps later, the sudden acute rise in uric acid. And uric acid is a signaling molecule that is going to change the function of the mitochondria, and I will get to that in a second. Backing up to the polyol pathway, when fructose uric acid metabolism is open through polyol, over 30% of the intracellular glucose is being pumped into endogenous fructose. The pathway itself is operating with kinetics that are over 10 times faster than the glucokinase reaction that's converting glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Now, the result of that is that we are going to pool glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which feeds back into glycolysis underneath the PFK1 step, causing a Warburg effect. The result being downstream that we are going to pool lactate and citrate. I will come back to what happens with the citrate in a minute. But the pooled uh, lactate and citrate functionally circle back and inhibit PFK1, down-regulating the 100% committed, committed step to glycolysis. We also have an elevation in, in acidosis within the liver at this point. Now we go back and we ask the question about what's going to happen to the mitochondria. And we have a number of things that are flowing, flowing full head of steam. We have a sudden acute rise in uric acid, which is a signaling molecule. We also have open fructose uric acid metabolism with the substrates that are being produced. One of the first things that we see in the literature is that there is a change in morphology of the mitochondria. They become smaller, they become fragmented, and the inner membranes become irregular. Next, we inhibit the TCA cycle because the crucial enzyme, aconitase, is inhibited by, in a uric acid-dependent mechanism, causing citrate, coming back to that, causing citrate to pool in the mitochondria it's shipped back out into the cytoplasm where two things happen. First, it circles back and downregulates PFK1. Secondly, it initiates de novo lipogenesis in the liver. We have... Moving too fast, sorry. Okay, so we have a second Krebs effect. Activation... Yeah. 
Okay, so activation of fructose uric acid metabolism with the elevation in uric acid, all right, it activates carbohydrate response element binding protein. This is an important aspect because what happens is that transcription factor is translocated into the nucleus where it activates the genes of de novo lipogenesis. So think, right now we have citrate initiating that process. We now have the initiation of, of the genes of de novo lipogenesis, including ATP, citrate lyse, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, fatty acid synthase, and also steroid coa desaturase 1. Now, in the matrix of the, of the mitochondria, we have the uric acid-dependent inhibition of enoyl hydratase, which is a crucial enzyme that's required for beta oxidation of fatty acids. So beta oxidation is being downregulated. Back in the cytoplasm, we have de novo lipogenesis rolling right along. And as a result of that, we start pooling malonyl-CoA, which, with the excess lactate, feeds back and inhibits the entry of the mitochondria by fatty acids by the inhibition of both CPT1 and also CPT2. We have the induction of the hypoxia-inducible factor, HIF1-alpha, and in concert with uric acid, we have the downregulation of urea cycle enzymes. And lastly, and not least, because we have the activation and upregulation of AMP deaminase, we have the downregulation of AMP kinase. And one of the functions of the activated AMP kinase is to promote beta oxidation of fatty acids. So we have significant changes to the mitochondria. Now the question becomes what happens with the insulin when we activate fructose uric acid metabolism, I'll remind you, through the polyol pathway activated by glucose. First and foremost, we see a decrease in the insulin receptor itself on the plasma membrane of the liver. We see a decrease in the protein, insulin receptor substrate 2. We see alteration in insulin receptor substrate 1 signaling. We have an elevation in hepatic insulin resistance, uh, which, based on the literature, they call this a paradox, because we have active de novo lipogenesis happening with the formation of oil droplets directly in the liver, the packaging of triglycerides into VLDL, and then being pushed into the, into the circulatory system at the very same time that we have gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis not shut down, which leads to the leakage of glucose back into the circulatory system at the same time when glucose is coming in and being processed by the liver. We have the elevation in synthesis of diacylglycerols, ceramids, and acylcarnitines, known instigators of insulin resistance. And in the extracellular environment, we have the downregulation of lipolysis, both because of an insulin effect and a specific lactate inhibition. Stepping back from this and asking the question, what are the main functions that are going to happen in the liver when we activate fructose uric acid metabolism? Glycogen synthesis, de novo lipogenesis, systemic inflammation, and alteration of nitric oxide signaling which poses problems downstream for the um, cardiovascular system. Now, it is often said that what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. However, when we activate fructose uric acid metabolism in the liver, what happens in the liver does not stay in the liver. We have a wave of four factors that are propagated downstream into the circulatory system that will operate on the peripheral tissues and organs with intracellular effects that mirror the kinds of things I'm talking about with the liver. Hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia, 
elevated lactate and elevated uric acid. I believe that the chronic activation of polyol fructose uric acid metabolism explains most, if not all, as an origin, metabolic diseases. And lastly, this effect that we see in the liver is as much about the glucose as it is about the fructose. Thank you. Thank you.